Hello everyone, this is Peak Entertainment and we are back again. I'm going to talk football now and this is going to be a review of the Man City and Arsenal game which recently finished a couple of hours ago now. And I don't normally post the score lines of matches in my reviews. So we'll be talking about the results. So if you don't know the result yet, you probably want to stop watching this video now. Go ahead and watch the match or the highlights and then come back to this review afterwards. So before I delve into the review of the match, I just want to say, yeah, great to have football back again. And watching these televised games behind closed doors, we had prior to this match, the Aston Villa and Sheffield United game. And I think overall they're doing a good job handling it. You know, I think the effects of the crowd overall works you know I think if you're watching it from a television perspective it really seems like it's a normal game regardless of the fact that the crowds are not there I think you know it builds a good enough of an experience from you watching from the television that you don't really notice it and you just carry on watching the game as normal and commentary and punditry as usual is obviously of a high standard so yeah I think it's going to be okay and won't take that much getting to used to as we go into the upper televised games that were going along so it's just great to have football back and we all know we're going to get a whole bucket load of live games being presented over the next couple of months as we try to complete the overall season so it's all very good and well in hand on here so it's good to have the game back up and running now and hopefully there'll be no issues going forward and we can try and get the premier league finished so we go on to the review of the match now and as everybody knows who watched this game the result was 3-0 and to be honest it's just the same old issue same old problems with Arsenal you know good start good on the ball show early signs of a threat and attacking momentum going forward and then they just struggle to make an impact or get that early goal and then over time they just get overwhelmed and they just whittle down and just surrender near the end. And that's essentially what happened here. You know, for the first 10, 15 minutes, Arsenal started off brightly. Aubameyang, Willick, they were all getting on the ball. They were all kind of doing well with these kind of paceful counter attacks. And they kind of had the upper hand. But there was a shift in the middle of the game and City really started to get a foothold of in the second half of the first half particularly in the midfield De Bruyne and De Silva were getting on the ball a lot more De Bruyne now was putting all these forward balls forward creating more chances for City we had that early opportunity for Sterling when he was put through and I think he tried to chip the keeper where he should have just really just drilled it across and that was kind of the early signs really of danger for Arsenal and of course prior to this we had the injuries both to Saka and Mary they had to come off now, if they'd have stayed on, would the result have changed? Would it have been different? I know it's hard to say. I'm not sure. I still think eventually City would have got a foothold in the game. It may have been later on, maybe. But I cement. We come to the goal and like David Luiz, De Bruyne, Luiz just gets the, his position wrong. He doesn't watch the float of the ball. It bounces off his feet. The ball follows through to Sterling, who drills at home at first. And again, it's just David Luiz. You know, we've known about this. This is nothing new. This is not a secret. You know, I never agreed with um, us signing him because we all know the defence is a critical area of where Arsenal go wrong. It's been that way for a good 14, 15 years now. So this is nothing new. And we all know that David Luiz is a liability at it back. You know, he is more suited at midfield where he's good on the ball. He can make forward bursts, but he won't cost you as such if he makes that original error. You know, your defence is still the last line before the opposition gets forward okay but you put him at the back and you're just risking all sorts of issues so yep he he was at fault for the first goal and then we go to the second goal in the second half where again we get a long ball and Arsenal again they just can't cope with the long balls we've known all this way way back you know again no new secrets here no new revelations here they just can't cope with the physical pressure of having to deal with the ball these long high balls and yeah they just you know, they just don't have the confidence or the stability to cope with those. And we get the long ball going through again. I think it comes inside and this second goal, Luis was at fault because he gets drawn into the ball rather than going with the runner. So the ball's played inside and it's played to Mares, and instead of going and tracking the runner, he tracks the ball and that puts him out of position. So Mares runs forward, runs across him and yep, okay, Luis puts his hand on him. He kind of, I mean, even it was such a light contact, he puts his hand on him, 
holding him back so the referee gives a penalty so I agree it was a penalty but I think the sending off was a bit harsh I mean he barely touches him he he kind of makes that forward motion that defenders do where they try to get a sneaky little grab and then pull their hands away as if they're not touching the defender but it clearly was and I just don't think it was a red card. I think yellow card, okay, fair enough. People will say he was the last man, but I think if you look at one shot, you can see Mustafi is behind him. Okay, maybe he's not near enough to the ball, but I just think in that case, you know, you should look at it and say, look, it's, he's barely touched him. It's one of those where Mares feels the contact and goes down for the penalty. So I think by all means, give the penalty, but for the sake of keeping it 11 against 11, in that scenario, you know, I think you, you, you should have just given him a booking. But fair enough, De Bruyne puts the penalty away 2-0 when really it's over at that point. Arsenal were just becoming less and less significant within the game. Abamian really kind of disappeared early in the second half. You know, he barely had any influence on the game. And he's not that kind of centre forward, you know. He's someone who kind of plays when the mood is with him. You know, when he's on it, he's good. But when he's not on it, he's not going to kind of run around and chase balls. But, you know, you remember like Sanchez did. Even if Sanchez didn't score, you pretty much knew Sanchez was still involved in the game. But Bamian's not like that. You know, when he's not involved, he'll kind of really disappear. And you you won't even notice that he's there. So he became far and far less influential. And then we had Lacassette coming on later on. Much impression of it. Nate the Miles had come on in the second half. And yeah, it was just over by then. The kind of players, they kind of knew it at this point. City just kept pressing more forward. And then the third goal was good interplay between Aguero and Sterling. I think Aguero hit the post and then Bowden snuck in for the third goal. So overall, again, it just highlights the same issues that we've had with Arsenal for the last really 12, 13, 14 years. I'm not going to be too harsh on Arteta to an extent because, again, this is something he's inherited from Amory, who, again, inherited a lot of it from Wenger. What I would criticise, again, and I had the same issues with Amory, is that even though they were recently acquainted managers, they still don't seem to be looking to address the problems. We're still going for these flashy, quick pace, skillful midfielders and attacking players when we should really be looking to solidify or solidify that defence. That's where the issues are. That's where the problems are. That's what you've got to focus on with Arsenal. And just seems any manager that comes in, even after Wenger, they still adopt the same kind of tendencies that Wenger did. You know, we still think we're this free-flowing, attacking, skillful team, and we never want to address the defensive flaws at the back. And so far, Arteta, he seems to be showing the same kind of tendencies that both Amory did and Wenger did before him. Now, I know that's a bit harsh. I know he's only recently taken over, but the early signs I'm seeing so far from his management, again, he's not addressing the defensive issues within the team. And that is what's costing Arsenal, as well as the lack of strength within the midfield. So it will be interesting to see what's going to happen going forward. Personally, I kind of write off this season. I think we just have to just ride it out. I don't believe we're going to make it into the top four, even though it's still mathematically possible. I just think the teams ahead of us are strong enough to put another run of results that I don't think we're capable of catching them. So it's a bit of a write off now. We're out of all con competitions. So I just think we just ride this season out and hopefully we can get to some kind of normalcy within football and Arteta can kind of enjoy a transfer window where he's got to make some you know very critical and important decisions and acquisitions within the club I don't know how they're going to configure the transfer window going forward for next season whether they're going to extend it to when the current season is going on or they might just have another month Again, we don't really know. It's more speculation at this point of how the current transfer window is going to go on. So we need to see what's going to happen there. But Arteta must, must address these divisive issues next year. I don't want to see any more 74 million on the looks of Pepe when you could you could easily buy two top class defenders for that same amount of money, even in today's inflated prices. So that's where it's got to start. You know, we've really now got to start now looking at these defensive issues and shore up that back four and it's always been that way you know I could spend four hours going on all the results that Arsenal have been through but that's where it's got to start I mean again Sky Sports during commentary they brought up that amazing stat that since 2015 against the big six clubs Arsenal have not won away from home they've had something like 15 losses and they haven't won away from home since 2015 
in the Premier League and that that is just shocking you know and if you've got any aspirations of you know winning premierships Champions League you just cannot have a record like that now sure okay they may have beaten the big six in FA Cup okay but those are one-off games but in the league it's just a terrible stat I mean I couldn't believe it when they brought up that statistic on here and again during this match they only had like two attempts on goal I think it was two or three attempts on goal and they didn't even manage a shot on target within the second half and that shows you again just how much of a lack of impact that they had within this match as it progressed on and it's just you know for me as a fan of Arsenal it's just the same mode I'm not really gonna start getting angry or fueled with outrage because I've seen it I've seen it year after year after year after year it's why when I started my channel I decided I'm not going to kind of cover every single Arsenal game because it's kind of like banging your head against a brick wall you just see the same thing again and nobody's changing it now before we could blame Wenger but now that we've post Wenger and we've seen Emery and now Arteta it's clear now there's a problem within the whole philosophy and the makeup of the club and you know that attitude has got to change and we've got to focus less on being this kind of quick skillful team and focus on being this more strong defensive team that's hard to break down that's where it's got to start so those are my other thoughts on the match below. Sorry to sound a bit depressing, but when you've seen this kind of thing from Arsenal from years and years and years, it's just difficult to cover them. That's why I'm not really going to start covering every single match. I may cover any kind of big issues or current events that go on within the team. Again, another debate. It's Ozil, and again, he's left out the squad again, and it's bringing up this whole debate. Is he really injured? What's going on with him? Are they trying to sell him? Is he playing up at the back? To be honest, that's a whole other video. You know, fans are questioning it again because of the fact that he's Arsenal's top earner, 350 grand a week, yet we barely see him now. And even when he does play, we barely see him anyway. So it, that's a whole other debate. I'm not going to go on about that again. But overall, those are my thoughts on Arsenal's match with Man City on here 3-0 let me know what you think in the comments below do you think this is just a one-off which if you're an Arsenal fan you know it isn't but do you think it is and you just think let's wait and see how Arsenal get on with the next few games when they can get more into match sharpness more into match fitness and then we can make another assessment after the next three or four games or do you think yep this is time now where Arsenal really got to make some sharp defensive changes as what we should have done two years ago five years ago ten years ago so let me know what you think in the comments below but those are my thoughts on Arsenal's match with Man City that's it for now take care of yourselves and I will see you very very soon